This is Ben Settle, the bensettle.com show. So Jonathan, I, I thought this was interesting. Right before we, we started talking here, I said I had something kind of fun to read on the show. I'm not going to name this person because oh, man. I don't see the need to. It's it's kind of a no, like it's not a name that anyone would recognize anyway. So they, they asked me a question today by email. Now, I don't know where this question came from. Okay. But here's the question. Loads of money with email question. Why should I believe you? Do you have proof of earning? <laughs> proof of earning. What? Some fucking Photoshop screenshots? <laughs> I know. Well, here's my first thought. I, when have I ever said loads of money? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what they're responding to. I have no idea what they're responding to. Why should I believe you? And, I, and, and you know, it's, it's fine. You can ask that question. Do you have proof of earnings? Do, do my earnings really matter to Hell them? No. Are they going to do the same? I, I don't know. I mean, a simple Google search and they'll actually find out more about about that than they need. They'll run into the 10 minute workday sales letter, for example, which actually underreports my income. So if that's not enough for them, for their little guru fanboy mind, I don't know what else to tell them. Actually, I don't know if this is a girl or a guy. It's the, the name is Lennox, L-E-N-O-X. Is that a guy's name or a girl's name? I couldn't tell you. I mean, I no offense to anyone named Lennox. I'm just curious. I don't know that. But um, so anyway, here was my response. Just because, you know, I, I was, you know, getting ready to wait, basically waiting for your call. So I, eh, whatever, why not just respond? So they asked the question, loads of money with email. Why should I believe you? Do you have proof of earnings? So I reply back with, you should not believe me. Go away. Shoot. <laughs> like, like, like to me, it's such a dumb question. I have a website that you can look, you, I have, I don't know, over a dozen hours of audio and video training on there. It's all free. You can test any of it out. You can opt into the list and you'll get the email, that first email player's issue. You can test it all out for yourself. I don't, publicly count money. If that bothers someone, then they shouldn't buy from me. I don't have anything to prove to anyone. I know that I live a pretty damn fun lifestyle and I'm enjoying life and I don't really worry about money too much. And if that's not enough for them, what can I say? I'm not going to be that idiot, the, the douche canoe out there who's showing proof of earnings. I'm just uh -oh. not going to do it. So, <laughs> so they reply back with this and rude too, to what were simple questions to answer. What? Any need? <laughs> Any need? You e you egoic? Is this a word? Egoic? E g o i c? I don't. Is that? Know. Hold on. Let me look at my dictionary. <laughs> e, e, I'm just curious because I'm going to use this word if it. It's not in my dictionary. Egoic. Okay. Any. So he called me an egoic moron. I'll definitely. Be, now here's my favorite part, John. This is this is the this is why I love this person. I hope I hear back from him again. I'll definitely be keeping your response. <laughs> And send, sending it to those appropriate. What? Now piss off with your drivel, silly little boy. <laughs> That's what he, what? Really? Yeah. So <laughs> like all that, I mean, you know, you know, somebody got triggered. Okay. <laughs> hey, show me your bank account. You should have, I, I would have been like, screw you, man. F off. But I know. You were polite. I, I, right. I thought I was nice about it. That was my whole point. But, you know, this is the thing. This is this is that whole this is the mindset the internet has created. Especially anyone who would ask that question, I already know I don't want them as a customer. Anymore, yeah, right. Like th like I wouldn't even let this person buy even if they wanted to because they're asking the wrong questions. They're coming at this from this like bizoppy like mindset, which does not jibe with what I sell at all. So could I have been nicer about it, Jonathan? Yes, but am I nice? No, I, I don't believe in this stuff. I want to <laughs> repel the, remember we talked about no, I want to repel this person away. The fact that they got so upset over that, what turns out to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words that I wrote back. No kidding. And I'm, you know, I'm an egoic moron and they're going to tell their mom about, I guess they're going to tell their mom on me or something. <laughs> Save the email, they're going to frame it. <laughs> they're going to frame it. And, and so... Anyway, th this has nothing really much to do with anything, okay? But I just find that amusing, and uh, I wanted to share it with you, the audience, and you, Jonathan, because I know you get a kick out of this kind of stuff, I and I want to entertain you. <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> anyway. How much money you um, got, man? I want some of your money. I want to see your bank account. And Give me I want your to see money. screenshots of your bank account. <laughs> and, and and otherwise, you're not real. Okay, you're right. I'm not real. I don't know what I'm talking about, and you should go you know, find someone who's real, and there you go. You know, it's like, I don't even get mad. See, that's the thing. These trolls like to, they want to fight. I don't give them any emotion to eat. To, they're, they're thriving on the emotion of a fight. I don't feed them. You know, you say don't feed the trolls. The way you don't feed trolls is just don't like give them any emotion. Let them eat on their own emotion, which that person is doing. That's why you're getting all this like insults and all that. They, they can't have a rational discussion. Their response should have been, did I ask the wrong question? I mean, is this, did I offend you or something? You know, ask something like politely and maybe, I, you know, I, then I would have politely said, look, you know, I don't do, am I going to show you my earnings? And if that bothers you, then you go find someone. There's lots of people who show you their earnings. Go to them. Yeah. Believe me, they need the business. 
<laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so, you know, I, I believe me, there's a lot of them that that really do need the business, and you know, who am I to steal business from them? I, I don't know. All right, so back to the point of this week's episode, which I have called affectionately called tripping the system. So, and to and to to kind of preface what I'm about to teach here to show everybody. So, ba- about a year ago. About a year ago, I flew to Boulder, Colorado to speak at Buck Rizvi, Rizvi's, I think that's how you say his name. I, yeah. I'm sure he would forgive me if I misspelled or mispronounced it. I don't pronounce anybody's name correctly, so it's not even it, – to get mad at me for this is just a waste of time. It's pure ignorance. It's not malice. That's <laughs> all it is. And so during this uh, flight and all that, on the way back, yours unruly, El Bembo, had a nasty case of diarrhea. Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> it was bad. It was so bad. And in these, in these airports, I mean, I'm constantly going, like I had some kind of food poisoning, something. And I I was uh, hanging with my ex copywriting apprentice at the time. We were still dating at the time. And she goes, you know, my dad says that lettuce and ice cream tripped the system like that. Did you have lettuce and ice cream? And it turned out I did have lettuce and ice cream and, and it trips the system for some people, at least for me, it did. Obviously, you know, her dad had some very interesting, um, her dad's actually a very interesting guy. I, he, he has a lot of interesting, like, little insights like that that I remember. But I remember thinking, at least for me, that's true. The dairy and the lettuce, they together, they could trip the system. And so it got me thinking about this, like, tripping the system. How can I turn this into a lesson? Jonathan, I had to really think hard about how can I turn this I into a, a, a marking lesson? Well, what about tripping the system? And I don't mean tripping the system of our friend Lennox there. You know, his system is easily tripped. <laughs> his his system was tripped by like nothing. He didn't even have any ice cream and lettuce. But the average person, <laughs> like the, the the people on your list, what's going to trip their system and make them just hate you? Because you basically gave them food poisoning when they hear from you. And, you know, makes them despise you and want nothing to do with you. This is my attempt, Jonathan, to to bridge the gap between that story and what I'm about to teach. There are certain things that people do in their emails. And Jonathan, you and I have talked about a lot of the stuff where I'm going to go over here that just trip the system of your readers. It's going to make them like think you're full of crap. It's going to make them mock you. It's going to make them hate you even more than Lennox hates me. Okay. Our <laughs> friend Lennox. Lennox might, you know, we might have to make Lennox a, a staple of this show, Jonathan. Like whenever we get troll mail or something, I'm going to say, this is a Lennox oh, mail. This, th- nice. Th- th- don't pull a Lennox on the person. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> How very Lennox of you, you know, <laughs> something like that. Lennox is such a cool, like, I think it's a cool name. And I, again, I, I think it's a guy's name, but I mean, it sounded like a guy to me. So I'm going to assume it's a guy's name. That may be something, that may be a, a, a name, a title that we give trolls, Lennox. And the, and what they do is Lennox, you know, as like a, as a, as an action, <laughs> they Lennoxed, they pulled a Lennox. You know, this may be something we do. I don't know. We'll have to think about this, Jonathan. But, <laughs> but I, I, I kind of, I'm liking it. I'm digging it. I really am. I mean, if it was a Scott or a Bob, this would not be nearly as entertaining. But yeah. Lennox, okay. <laughs> Lennox. Um. <clears throat> anyway, so what will trip the system? What are some things that will trip the system, Jonathan? I think that you will get a kick out of these things that I talk about. Not not because you like receiving these things, but because you see people doing it and you just shake your head and you go, why? Why are they doing this? See. <laughs> First and foremost, I cannot talk about email and, and tripping the system without talking about this first, because it's probably the most common. And that is when, I don't know who the first person to do this was, I have no idea, okay, but where they put sent from iPhone at the bottom of an email broadcast, <laughs> <laughs> sent from iPhone. <laughs> with the A now, Weber code below it, right? <laughs> with the A Weber opt-out code below it. And um, there was one person who actually did this in a way that made sense, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But you couldn't do it more than like once, right? So I'll, I'll tell it because I don't really care if anyone does it in the way this guy did it. But I'll, I'll just tell his story. He was, this guy was, I don't know if he's still an email player subscriber or not, but he was one. And uh, he writing for the, in the dating niche for a very well-known dating coach. One of the legitimate ones, actually. I'll say this guy. He, he actually has some good products and stuff. And, and the subject line was sent from iPhone. So he put it in the subject and, and you know, talked about how he typed the email up on his iPhone and then put it in the system and in the autoresponder and sent it. That's actually a legitimate way of doing it. It's not sent from iPhone at the bottom of the email. It's in the subject line. But if you put it at the bottom of the email, you're looking like a complete douche canoe. Okay. And you, <laughs> now, now people will say, well, not everybody's on to that. And, and believe me, I've heard very well respected, even people that I respect in other aspects, just not this aspect, suggest that people do this. Like as a, as a way of, of doing their email. And I've had many debates uh, with this 
the person I'm thinking of publicly in a room, I should say, not publicly, like on the internet, you know, debating him, not in a mean way, not pulling a Lennox on him or anything like that, but <laughs> but just a, you know, just like as, as a battle of philosophies. And some people say, this is okay. You should, you could, you should, why not? Who does it hurt? Whatever. Well, it, it only hurt, it, first of all, for every person that knows what you're doing that, and says something, there's probably 10 more that, that haven't said anything. There are some people that are completely clueless, which is true, that won't know the difference. But you have to ask yourself, do you want that person as a customer? I mean, this is the person that won't know how to download the ebook, right? Like this is, you know, you have to ask yourself that. Do you want that kind of customer? I would personally say no. I, I think putting scent from iPhone is complete low-class jackass. It's a lie. You know, it's, it doesn't hurt anybody. I understand. But I'm against it, and it trips the system. It, it will make people pull a Lennox on you, okay, and a lot of – I guarantee it. If you put scent from iPhone at the bottom, you're going to get a, a Lennox emailing you back. And and yelling at you and, and like like I got yelled at, which may be amusing to you, but you'll deserve it in your case. I didn't deserve it in mine, Jonathan. Well, maybe a little bit. I, I mean, I was a little bit of a smart ass, but whatever. Another thing that trips the system is when you're being obviously manipulative. So I'm thinking back right now, this is an example. There was this guy who was like an NLP, like he claimed to be an NLP guy. I, I've never heard his name before. He's not like one of the well-known ones or anything like that. I can't remember. It was so long. It was like 10 years ago. I don't know if he was paying me to critique his ad or maybe it was like in a forum somewhere and he was asking for people to critique his ad, probably in some underhanded way of thinking he's going to sell people whatever his sales letter was selling. And you know how NLP, they like to repeat things and all that, yeah. Jonathan, it's kind of, the whole sales letter was like that. And it was so obvious what he was doing. Like it was obvious, even though I didn't know shit about NLP, I still don't. I could tell he was being overly, but it was so obvious. And, you know, I, I don't know what the guy's numbers were, but I'm guessing that probably it tripped the system of his readers. Maybe some people even pulled a Lennox on him. Um, I, I, <laughs> love letters. I don't know. <laughs> you know, Lennox love letters. I don't know. But these things will pull, I mean, these things will get a Lennox pulled on you. I mean, people will Lennox <laughs> out on you if you do this kind of stuff. So just something to think about. Oh, here's another one. Now, this, this isn't necessarily like an email thing. It is in a way, but I got this email from someone on my list. They were replying back to one of my daily emails. And, and, and here was the question. It was just a blind question. Do you consider yourself a charitable man, Ben? <laughs> now, what? I already feel like now, if, there's, if anything's going to make me feel like I'm being set up <laughs> for something, <laughs> guilt trip, whatever it is, it's that. I didn't even answer the guy. He tripped my system. Now, I didn't pull a Lennox on him and email him back or yell at him. Right? I just simply ignored it. But if you don't ask blind questions, this is the worst thing. I hate it when someone says, what are you doing next Thursday? Why don't you just tell me what the hell you are doing? And then I can choose whether or not I want, don't try to <laughs> rope me into whatever you're doing. So I always tell, whenever people ask me blind questions, what are you doing? I say, yeah, I'm busy, <laughs> nice. whatever it is. And then I'll say, why, what are you doing? And then I'll get the truth out of them. And then I say, yeah, well, I'm busy if I don't want to do it, which is most of the time. But I don't understand why people ask these blind questions. It's as bad as when somebody on your list leaves you a voicemail and doesn't tell you what it's about. They just want you to call them back. Ooh, it's not going to happen, Jonathan. I'm not going to so do annoying. it. So annoying. All right. You know, if that's going to get some of the Lennox out on me, then I'd do so be it. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not worried about it. Here's another thing. So somewhere in the Facebook <laughs> Facebook thing, I don't know who termed it. I don't, I think I termed it or someone else termed it this. The MILF launch, M-I-L-F, like, you know, you know what a MILF is, right, Jonathan? Yeah. A MILF from the porn world, okay. So, <laughs> Porn world. <laughs> okay, so I have to say something here, though. I really do, because I don't want, there are certain people who listen to this show, they're thinking I'm hating on somebody. I'm not. So there's this guy out there, Jeff Walker, who I don't know. I don't know the guy. I've never met him at the time of this recording, okay? I, I, I've never met the guy. I, from what I understand, the product launch formula is a very high quality product that people should buy. Like I, everyone I know who has that product loves it. Okay. So I've never gone through it, but because I have my own little way of doing launches, it's much less work and time. Probably if I did his way, I'd make more money. I, I'm the first to admit it. So this is not anything against him or anything like that. But you always know when, when that product launch form is about to be sold because you start getting emails from all of his affiliates. I mean, it's just, that's how he markets it. There's nothing wrong with it. Perfectly cool. You know, great. I have to say this because I know there are fanboys who are going to get really uptight if, if they think I'm making fun. I'm not. I have nothing but respect for the guy. And I don't even met him, but I have respect for him. How can you not have respect for someone, you know, at that level and everything who does all that kind of stuff? You have to. I do at least. But there are people who misuse, <laughs> okay, the stuff he's doing. And for example, and you, this isn't, this happened a lot before a couple of years ago. I don't see it as much now where they will say now the, the deadline is, you know, Sunday, whatever the day is. 
or Friday. Let's say the deadline's Friday. Fine. There's nothing. That's nothing gets done without a deadline. It's great. I'm all for deadlines. But then it magically op- the cart magically opens up the again reopen. on Monday. Insert bullshit excuse. Okay. You know, it's always some, and oftentimes it's a bullshit, and everyone knows it's a bullcrap excuse. And I'm not saying it won't get you more sales. It probably will. I'm not saying not to do it if you, if you want to. But realize, too, if you're selling to intelligent people, they're going to say, well, I thought the deadline was Friday. Now you're opening up again, and there's some excuse, you know, whatever it is. You know, so many people wanted it. We're, we're going to let them do it. I mean, you can, you can say that if you want. That's fine. But to me, if you're going to make a deadline, have the deadline, you know? I'm not saying you can't make exceptions for certain people and all that, but when it comes off as manipulative, and that's what I'm talking about, the way that some people do this, it absolutely comes off like, like manipulative. Like you're like, what? wait a minute, this thing just, you know, it doesn't make sense. So so somebody termed it the MILF launch instead of the PLF uh, launch when people do that. <laughs> the, the MILF launch. So we just, you know, just, just something to think about. You know, again, nothing against the system or that. I, I'm, you know, as far as I can tell, it works like crazy for people who use it. I'm all for it. I think he should buy it the next time he sells it. But for his affiliates, that's what I'm really talking to his affiliates right now. You know, don't bullshit your customers. Okay, if you want to reopen it Monday, simply say, look, in fact, this is what I would say, Jonathan. I'd say, look, we made a lot of sales on this. I'd like to make some more sales. So I'm opening this back up. (laughs) Be honest about it. Just be transparent about it. You know, and here's another bribe that I'm going to give you in order to do it, to get you to try this. And I know I I set a deadline and I like to keep to my deadlines, but you know what? This thing is just doing so well. I'd be a fool of a marketer not to keep this thing open. Make the skeleton That's dance. how I would do it. <laughs> how I would do it. I would, that's exactly it. That, so anyway, so, so don't do the MILF thing. That, that will just, that's just going to trip the system. <laughs> Here, here's, a, here's, another, here's another thing. Now, this is, again, this is something you're going to, you see a lot because they, people take, do this tactically and they think, it. oh, it works because Ben does, it works. No, I don't do it the way that. People will actually sit there and write a whole drama queen or drama king email. And it's actually, I, there are girls that, but it's mostly guys that I've heard doing this, t- telling, you need to get off my list. If you're not serious, I want you off my list. You know, they basically doing like being a, a douche <laughs> canoe about it. And, and, and st- <laughs> you know, instead of like, I don't understand, like the, the art of subtlety has just lost its day. Why don't you simply just email in a way where people you don't want on your list will automatically remove themselves and you don't have to go through the posturing. You know, people who do this come off as absolute douche canoes. They really do. And they, you need to get off my list because you're not serious. I'd rather you be off my list. <laughs> you know, they're, you know, they're like hulking. They're like they're pulling a Lennox, basically. You know what they're doing? They're pulling a Lennox on their list. Yeah. Is what they're doing, trying to insult the people off their list. I don't believe that. I think that's going to trip the system of the good people are thinking, what is this douche canoe saying? Just, you know, if you want to get certain people off your list, simply invite them. Say, look, you know, if you're not, if you're someone who doesn't like this kind of email or you don't like to be pitched, please feel free to use the unsubscribe link at the bottom. There's no problem. I won't even know about it. I don't want to cause you any, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you to Lennox out on me. Don't get butt Whatever. hurt. <laughs> don't get butt hurt. You know, Again, I don't understand this, like this, like people trying to act tough about it. There's just nothing tough about that. It, it just comes off as douche canoeish. The douche canoe. <laughs> you know, just get in your douche canoe and don't do it and, 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 and float off, okay, before you do something like that. Okay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> douche Here's canoe-ish. something that, <laughs> that you took it to a new level. <laughs> the douche canoe. I keep thinking of the great that show, the Great Space Coaster, from when I was a kid. I don't know why the, the Great Douche Canoe Coaster. <laughs> I have no idea. It could be a, it could be a, a TV show. I don't know. So <laughs> the last one that that trips the system, and this isn't something that is necessary. Like people, this one you can still not do what I'm about to say, and you'll be, you make sales. But and this goes back to the Jim Camp thing from last week. One of the things he talks about is building a vision. Like in negotiation and selling, you got to build a vision before you can get people like, before you pitch them. That's why he would go door to door and say, well, how's the water treating your hair? Suddenly they have a vision of the problem before he goes and even shows them a water filter instead of coming in with the water filter. So in your emails and ads, I highly suggest this, that you build a vision before you pitch benefits and claims. That's a little tactical right now, John, I don't want to go into too much detail on that, but yeah. it gives them something to think about. If you just come out swinging with claims right off the bat, like, ah, last day, and here's what you're going to get. And you haven't even talked about the problem or anything or the solution. Eh, you're tripping some systems out there. You know, I don't think anyone's going to pull a Linux on you or anything, but you are tripping the system. <laughs> And so anyway, Jonathan, that's all I got for this time. Next week, I want to talk about my four biggest influences and why they're my biggest influences, why I think you should, like everybody should be following them. If they like what I'm teaching, I'm simply learn from these guys. 
And that's what we'll talk about next time. All right. Can't wait for that. Another BenSettle.com podcast is in the can. We'll climb back in your earbuds next week. Thanks for tuning in.